good. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, welcome to our second, right? Our second uh, uh, mindfulness gathering. Um, you know, in an attempt to continue to focus on our groundedness and our creativity. Um, be balanced. You know, as you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time focusing on technical aspects in the economy, and sometimes it's just equally important to just dial down and breathe. And so that's what we're going to do today. And I think you wanted to do the. Yes. Um, well, first of all, before I introduce our guides for the day, uh, I did want to remind anyone who wasn't aware of it that we are offering. Um, mm -hmm. We're offering anyone who asks a, a three-month premium subscription to Calm, which is a which is an app and website that has many resources on it. You can have Matthew McConaughey read you a bedtime story, uh, and there are, are various mindfulness exercises. None of them will be as good as what you're about to experience, of course. <laughs> but we just wanted to remind you that we'll send you a, a code for a three-month premium subscription just. Drop us a line. It's the difference called. is you get to keep it all day, every day. Jane's not with us all day, every day to go, hey, hey, excuse me, remember, breathe. And the Calm app will remind us of that. So our guide today is Jane Cunningham, who is a good friend, does a lot of work with Yeski Bui and our, and our team, and uh, is, a, is a licensed psychotherapist and a meditation teacher, and has done many decades of mindfulness work, and, and will be the beneficiaries of that today. She'll be assisted by our other good friend and husband, David Brand, uh, who's been uh, also for many decades has been a consultant and advisor to our firm and uh, has helped guide our development and culture. So we're very pleased to, to have both David and Jane today taking us through uh, some mindfulness exercises. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. It's great to be here today. And I feel like a lot of you, most of you, have probably heard a lot about mindfulness. It's very, very popular now and has been for a while. But what I'd like to do is really give you some felt sense experience of what mindfulness is and how it plays into meditation and how a mindfulness meditation practice supports mindfulness in your daily life. Uh, most people describe their mind as like a pinball machine. Like it just kind of pops from one thought to another thought to another thought, and then it lands in one of those little eddies and gets compulsive a while and obsesses, and then it pops back out. And um, it isn't really a great experience to have your mind so untamed in a way. And yet, most people don't know how to tame their minds. So mindfulness is about taming our mind so that our mind works for us and brings us into presence. And to me, the most simple description of mindfulness is, is your mind where your body is? And because our mind can go into the future, into the past, and you're not really present. And when you're not really present, you're not getting the full impact of wherever you are. So say you're looking at a beautiful sunset, but you're thinking about something that you have to do in the future. You don't get to feel the beauty and the um, what do I say, the poignancy of where you are. Even if you're washing dishes, that can be an experience of being fully present, of feeling whole, of really getting into those bubbles or whatever you're doing and feeling it. So mindfulness is a lot about a felt sense. I think sometimes people think that meditation is just a very mental thing, but it really isn't. It's about an integration of the body and the mind so that you not only feel it, but you, your mind is right there with you. Um, our everyday moving mind, and that's just the average mind of how most of us operate, is, you know, kind of has a negativity bias. And what that is, is the ego mind depends upon survival. And so it's always scanning for threat. And it's the part of us that it's kept us alive, but really we're not like it used to be where there's a, we're in a forest and there's a, a lion that's gonna go after us. So instead, we develop this kind of vigilance of watching and kind of waiting for a threat, waiting for the shoe to drop, and that there's a lot of anxiety in that. And as we know, anxiety is the greatest uh, kind of problem that people have today, especially since COVID, but anxiety is pretty rampant. And meditation and mindfulness 
is the opposite of that. It teaches us how to ground, how to be where we are, and how to breathe on a deeper level. Also, your mind has its habits. So we all have a personality, and this personality is based on our conditioning. So our conditioning as, are we a female or male? Are we from the Midwest? Are we from the East Coast? Are we, uh, what, what nationality are we? What religion were we brought up? So we develop this conditioned personality that we come to see as ourselves. But there's a deeper self. And meditation and mindfulness can bring us into that deeper self, which is kind, compassionate, clear, present, and wise. And it's always there. And that's the beauty of learning how to disidentify from our personality, where everybody's personality, to be honest, is a little cray cray. Um, we all, you know, I could think of 10 ways in which I annoy my husband, and he probably has a few extra ones of my personality, of how I was brought up, of how the conditioned mind is, because the conditioned mind is basically a fearful mind. It's always trying to somehow defend itself from being um, dissolved. The ego doesn't want to let go. The ego is kind of bossy. And whereas the deep self is this wide open, accepts everything, rejects nothing, spot on. And when we can tame our ego mind to support us when we need it, if every time you met somebody you were different, they would wonder you know, how they could trust you. So we have this mask, this ego self that we need, but and we also have to take care of it because if we don't take care of it, it can go off rogue. It can go into addictive behavior. It can go into compulsive behavior. It can overreact. So by connecting, on a deep level, all parts of ourselves. So meditation, we have this deep base, this mindful base, and the other layers of your personality, of the part of you that's labeling everything, um, they're supported by this calm base. So it isn't like you wanna get rid of your ego or you wanna get rid of your thoughts, it's rather you wanna support them with calm. And that's very different than I think a lot of people think of when they think of meditation or mindfulness. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on two aspects, and one is cultivating mindfulness. The other is creating a meditation practice based on mindfulness. So cultivating mindfulness starts with the breath, and there are two ways of working with mindfulness. One is having an object of focus, and that can be the breath, it can be a candle, it can be a word, it can be a mantra. The other way is to exist in open awareness. And that's where there's no, you're not kind of bringing the mind back to anything. You're not coming back to the breath. You're just so present that you can take in everything at once. You can feel your mind, your body, your outside environment, and you're just kind of like you're in an intuitive space continually. So we're gonna work on those two things and they support each other. So when thinking about what mindfulness is, is mindfulness is maintaining a moment to moment awareness of our thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations and surrounding environment. I'm gonna say that once more. Mindfulness is maintaining a moment to moment awareness of our thoughts, feelings and bodily sensations and surrounding environment. Mindfulness, is when your mind is where your body is. There's an integration. So a simple question to ask yourself if you're present, because if you're present, it means you're mindful, is, is my mind where my body is? Just every once in a while, kind of bring yourself back, just gently, kindly. And our goal here is to create an embodied awareness where there's that integration that I talked about. And meditation, is the practice where an individual uses a technique such as mindfulness to train the attention and awareness to be mentally clear and emotionally calm. So meditation is a practice to train the attention and awareness to be mentally clear and emotionally calm. So meditation is like having clarity and calm in the bank. It's like how an athlete does drills. And then when they're in a game, 
their body remembers those. It's the same thing. Our body mind just remembers how to be mindful, even in a you know dicey or tense experience because you have so much practice. So they really do support one another. And the reason for this embodied focus is that our body is wise too. We think of our mind as having wisdom, but really the deepest wisdom that we have is in our heart. Our heart lets us know what's truly important to us. Is it truly important to feel love or is it truly important to, you know, buy a dress? Um, so you can, you know, you feel it. And our culture is very mental oriented. And I think sometimes disses feelings when feelings really let us know if we're in our, in our integrity, if we're truly being honest, if something really matters. And so we want both. And I have a good example of that that may seem a little extreme, but it was interesting at the time. And that was, I was working as a therapist for criminals, felons. And I'm teaching about 30 guys how to meditate and they're all trying to sit straight and do their thing. And you know, most of them could, couldn't sit cross-legged. And, you know, they kind of thought, oh God, what is this woman teaching us this new agey stuff? But I noticed one guy and he was completely engaged. He had the breathing down, the posture, everything. And I'm thinking, hmm. So afterwards I asked him, you know, it looks like you've meditated before. You know, where'd you learn how to meditate? And he said, well, it, it's part of my religion. And I said, oh, what religion is that? And he said, Satanism. And I said, whoa, <laughs> Satanism. But I started thinking about why would Satanists meditate? And it's because they know the power of the mind. Now they use the mind as disconnected from the heart to manipulate and to, you know, basically abuse power. But it's so important that our mind and our body are connected and that their heart is the center of it all. Um, so anyway, the mind over matter, I don't really like that. It's mind and matter. It's how can we integrate and practice from a grounded state. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to begin with an awareness practice and a breath practice. So I wanna tell you one thing before, and I'm gonna use the word awareness a lot. Awareness is the foundation of being present. It's a knowing that includes both thinking and feeling, body and mind and heart, being and doing. So it is that total integration. It's like when a baby's born, a baby is wide awake, but a baby doesn't have concepts, doesn't have thoughts, doesn't have an identity. But yet that awareness, it's super aware, super sensitive. And so we're going to develop this kind of open mind that can watch things without getting caught, that can have feelings arise without having to follow them, where you're just aware of what is. So I want you, if you would, to get comfortable, if you aren't already, and to start to bring your awareness inside. <clears throat> And you can close your eyes and make sure that you're comfortable. Now, the easiest way to stay present is to be in touch with your breath. So we're gonna start by bringing your awareness to your breath. Just noticing how your breath is moving through your body, where it moves easily, and where it moves not so easily. And you're not trying to change anything. You're just becoming aware of your breath. And I want you, if you would, to lengthen your exhale so that your exhale is twice as long as your inhale. If you can breathe through your nose, that's preferable. And engage your senses. Listen to the sound of your breath, like waves of the ocean. Notice the pause at the end of the exhale and let yourself linger there a moment.
And if your mind wanders, just gently bring it back to your breath. No judgment, knowing it's the nature of the mind to wander. And bring your awareness to your diaphragm, which is at the base of your rib cage, like a rubber band, horizontal rubber band at the base of your rib cage, and just put your hand there. And feel that muscle begin to soften. Feel that rubber band loosen as you breathe. Feel the warmth of your hand melting it. Feeling any tension begin to dissolve. Nice long exhales and being aware that you're exhaling. And breathe into your back, feel your back puff out against the couch. Your chair. Imagine that you have a balloon in your belly and as you breathe, it expands back and feel your rib cage expand sideways and feel it expand sideways. And feel it breathe down towards your pelvic floor. And imagine that roots are extending from your pelvic floor and the soles of your feet if you're sitting upright into the ground. And feeling those roots going through the crust of the earth into the soil, into the rock. Feeling the solid support of the earth beneath you, always there supporting you. Invite your body to let go of any tension as you imagine a waterfall of warm water washing down your head, your face, your neck, your shoulders, your chest, your belly, your pelvis, down your legs, and releasing any tension off the soles of your feet just releasing, melting, letting that tension dissolve. And bring your attention inward. Let's start with your feet. Imagine your awareness is inside your feet. And you could experience the world from inside your feet. Feel your feet breathing. Feel the cells inhaling and exhaling. And now your legs. Feel the breath breathing you. You don't even have to effort. Your breath knows what to do. All the while, feeling your breath, breathing you. And imagine that your mind was an empty open screen. And thoughts and feelings come up on that screen. And you're just watching from this very calm base. Not following them, just letting them arise and move off the screen. It's as if your mind is the sky. Thoughts and feelings come up, but you stay in the background. You don't go to the foreground where the thoughts are. You stay in the background like a zoom lens that you can pull back wider and wider.
and feeling this felt sense of the mind begin to stilling itself. Notice the space between the thoughts. Rest there. Now gently, we're gonna transition back, but you're gonna keep this internal focus, this awareness of your mind as being very open. And you're gonna very gradually open your eyes, but to a soft focus so that your lids are slightly closed, a little bit open. And all the while, you're maintaining this awareness where there's spaciousness where you're aware of your body and your mind and my voice. And then open your eyes just a little bit more. And notice if your attention starts to go outward. And if it does, pull some of it back inward. So you're aware of your inner being and your outer environment. And you can hear my voice and you can take in what I'm saying, but you're maintaining this awareness. And as I speak, I want you just to again, maintain that inner awareness, but also to be able to listen. as we move into an open awareness meditation. And this open awareness meditation, you're no longer focusing on your breath. Instead, you're focusing on just your awareness of your internal environment, your external environment, your body, your mind, and just notice anything that comes up on your mind screen and then just move on. You don't follow it, you don't linger on it. You just keep pulling your mind back to that wider lens. You're aware of being inside your body. You're not observing your body, you're in your body. You notice the energy in your body. You have the felt sense of your legs, of your belly. And if your mind wanders, you just bring it back to your awareness. So you're not spacing out or even blissing out. You're just right here, right now, very aware of everything that's going on inside and outside. And you're bringing in more and more spaciousness, breathing into this inner space, molecules of empty open space, as if you could bring the sky into your mind. Noticing how when there's more space in your mind, your thoughts begin to wind down. And this space is intelligent. It's spacious awareness. Though it's empty, it's very aware. It's empty of thoughts, but it's full of awareness full of mindfulness. Notice how it feels to just rest in your body mind, not having to go anywhere, do anything, feeling more and more space. 
as that camera gets wider and wider, as more and more cells of empty space come into your body. Imagine that your body is like a cloud and everything just moves through it. Nothing sticks, no emotions, no thoughts. And the thought comes, you notice it, but you just don't follow it. Imagine your mind is like the sky, once again. Now bring your awareness to your heart and sense into your heart. Notice how your heart feels. And go a layer deeper. Feel your heart begin to melt and open. And go a layer deeper than that. And go another layer deeper, sensing into what your heart feels. Perhaps you, an image arises or a thought or a feeling and not lingering, just noticing and melting and opening another layer. And perhaps you reach a plateau and you can just rest there. as if your mind were a muscle and you could just let it go and just be aware. This awareness is not mental, but rather it's a foundational consciousness of simply being aware, of being present, of being mindful of what is in this moment and the next moment. Notice how it feels to be aware moment to moment versus a goal orientation. And now we're gradually going to transition back, but you're going to bring with you this open, spacious, aware mind. Keeping your seat, keeping that internal presence. It doesn't get pulled or lured to go too far outside itself. So gradually, you're going to begin transitioning beginning to open your eyes. You can stretch or wiggle your fingers or your toes. And you can play with, do you want to open your eyes fully or would you like to keep that soft focus that helps maintain an internal groundedness, an internal awareness? And so we have a choice to let our monkey mind hijack our consciousness simply due to habit or to pull back into this spacious awareness. And this awareness we can bring into anything we're doing, anything from as simple as walking to changing your clothes to showering. And you know, what it does 
is it enhances our presence so that our experience is more fulfilling and more complete, more whole. There's a wholesomeness about mindfulness of just acknowledging kind of the miracle of just being, of being amidst beauty in nature, being amidst beautiful beings like right now and letting ourselves fully experience it. So the other thing is, is that meditation actually changes your brain. There's something called neuroplasticity where we can change our brain and it increases gray matter. It increases your attention ability, your ability to kind of navigate emotions. It increases memory. So there are many, many positive benefits of meditating besides having calm and clarity in the bank so that when you go out in the world, you have to practice mindfulness. You have this calm and clarity. But I'd like to hear from you mm. and, you know, how you experienced it. You know, like, was there a difference from when you had your eyes closed to when you had them partially open from when you were focusing on the, your breath in the background from when you kind of let go of the breath and I'm just curious these are subtle differences but if you you guys noticed anything and, and just to, well first of all thank you so much breath is life life is breath and what I really enjoyed there is even in my practice it's often a separate standalone experience we're really training ourselves to integrate and incorporate it in, in our lives all the time, I think was a beautiful lesson. I know Lauren is able to receive comments and questions and then she'll send them my way. So yeah, if you have any comments or questions, we have a few minutes or um, I know Jane would love to field those. So send them our way. And Elise and Dave, I don't know if you have any initial comment or question as I wait for anything from Lauren. Oh, you guys can hear us, can't you? I don't have to type. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but I don't have to type it in. So what was interesting to me, Jane, your question about um, how, the different feeling between eyes closed and, eye, and then that, that soft focus, I actually found it easier to be present and in my body with my eyes open in the soft focus. When my eyes are closed, my brain takes that as a, a, a like free range, go somewhere else. And with this focus, it's like I could see myself, right? I can see with soft focus, I can see myself. I can see my legs and my hands. And it, it, I found it easier to stay contained and in my and body. Yeah. Oh, that's a great point. And the eyes are such a powerful sense. Right. Round. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I can see that. And what were you going to say? I was going to say I, I, I had exactly the same experience uh, that, 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 um, as I as I moved into the the, the soft focus phase, um, it, it it definitely created a difference, and it almost made it easier to to feel that internal expansiveness. Yeah. And something about something about a visual connection, even a soft focus connection to the outside world. Um, I don't know. It just it it, it opened something up for me. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of uh, meditation practices in the Tibetan tradition, you meditate with your eyes open um, or soft focus. But yeah, they do that. So, Elisa, what you were saying is when you close your eyes, it kind of gives your mind permission to like go. Oh, that somehow the monkey comes out when I close my eyes. <laughs> so, yeah, the monkey was in there with mine with the soft focus. Yes. So uh, Lauren says there are no questions so far. So obviously everyone is in a perfect state of awareness and, and has no questions. I have another question while people think about something they might want to type in. And the little control box um, for, for go to meeting or go to webinar does have a place if you expand it where you can type in, uh, type in questions. Um, so I'm curious, and I'd be actually interested to hear from both of you, although although the answer I suspect might be very overlapping. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of a routine you try and maintain with respect to your meditation? 
Um, I'm a little bit of a meditation junkie. Um, I discovered it in my mid twenties and just was like, wow, like, why didn't I know this before? Um, so I typically meditate every morning, but um, I was telling Elisa last time, I do it with a cup of tea and I'm comfortable. And you know, there's a question of, do you keep your spine straight, which helps the energy move better? Or, you know, are you relaxed? And I say, do what makes you more likely to keep doing it. So, you know, for me, if I have that cup of tea, it feels warm in my hands. It's like this ritual. And the deeper I go, the colder the tea gets. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it kind of serves two purposes for me. Um, I, I feel that warmth and I, so I practice um, an open, medi open meditation pretty much where I just focus on open awareness. But if I do sit down and my mind is going all over, I'll start with a breath, a focus. So the breath is the object of a focus. You can use a mantra, you could use a, a sound, you could stare at a candle. Any way that you can focus your mind can be helpful. Um, so if my mind's all over the place, I'll start with that. And then I'll move into kind of an open awareness um, focus. I, I started meditating when I was 16. I was watching the Beatles on TV and there was something about transcendental meditation. And then, you know, it took off over my life. Now <clears throat> I try to do something in the morning and at night, even if it's I just for you. a few minutes, there's something about doing a little bit of body awareness, mindfulness right before you go to bed, which can be really powerful. And also when you first wake up, but it's interesting since COVID-19, there's been such scientific evidence-based research about the power of oxygenating your body and blood. And that if people get sick, actually have oxygen depletion in their butt. blood. What I've been trying to do is simply be aware of breathing more I wouldn't even call it meditation, Lisa. I appreciate or, and Dave your question. I, I've gotten more to less about 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there. It's more about, okay, how often am I aware of my breath during the day? And COVID-19 has actually increased my awareness there. Um, so there's a question. Do you think it's better to meditate every day for shorter periods or carve out longer time periods once or twice a week? Fabulous question. You know, and I would say, what feels better to you? Do, do you get more benefit from every day shorter or are you a person that likes longer meditations? Is that more fulfilling? And, and what could create uh, more habits and better yeah, habits? Yeah, and better habits. I mean, there, there, is some, uh, there is some spiritual practice that talks about short moments repeated frequently, right? Becomes continuous. But that doesn't matter. <laughs> if you can do short moments all the time, great. But I think you're you're right. It's about whatever resonates. Whatever resonates, whatever fulfills you more, whatever helps you bring that mindfulness into your daily life more. Um, at certain moments, I found myself feeling happy and smiling. Yay! Yay! <laughs> we like that. Yes. Uh, not a question, but agreeing about the eyes, open point, much easier to stay focused without a license to drift. Interesting. That is yeah. interesting. And so when you do the soft focus, part open, part closed, Dave, I think you were saying you could feel your internal kind of self more, but yet you could use the external to help the focus. Is that what you meant? Yeah. So that, yeah. you know, and I was thinking of, say you're in a meeting and you're getting agitated or something. I know that would never happen, but, um, <laughs> You know, and you want to kind of like pull in, you just soften your focus a little bit so that you pull into your inner sanctuary and you can kind of calm yourself at the same time you're aware, but you've got this inner inner kind of calming action going on. Well, so getting back to that question, such an incredible question about shorter periods, you know, more frequently. About anything you can do, like at Yeski Bui, you know, we try to habituate just taking time to breathe. Well, what does that mean? Like, yes, you're spending 20 minutes, 10 times. A day. No. Oh, we're having a staff meeting. One minute of breathing. Oh, you're going to meet with a client. Can you just, can you just breathe for a minute? Right? Can you just ground yourself for a moment? Or with a vendor or another staff. So it can be one minute, 30 seconds, two minutes. So even when you think about short moments, 
It's just, you know, I'm trying to get into the habit, <clears throat> excuse me, of doing that every time I eat. Okay, I'm about to eat. Just take 30 seconds and just breathe for God's sake. So, so anyway, whatever works to, to help you habituate being aware of the breath is huge. And I remind you of Thich Nhat Hanh's yeah. amazing, but anyway. Okay. Okay. You know, the breath calms your nervous system, but it also connects your body and your mind. And so, and it offers you a focus for your attention. So it's so key, just if you were to do any practice, a breath practice is, I think, the best because it brings you into presence, it connects your mind and body, and it calms your nervous system. And lower belly, when you breathe in your lower belly, that's what kicks in that parasympathetic nervous system, which calms. So, you know, just breathing from your lower belly, whatever you're doing is so helpful. I love the questions are great, by the way, and we still have five minutes to go. Thoughts on how to retain that level of calm and mindfulness when engaged in a stressful dialogue or confrontation. This is like, this is the mother load. <laughs> Why don't you start with that one? Because I think you're great at that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll get back to habit that when I am in my strongest, most powerful, most connected, it's when I've been, when I've habituated my breathing so much that anything that comes my way, I'm still aware of my breath. I'm still aware of my breath. Now, sometimes I'm aware of going into a meeting that might have stress and confrontation, and that is a great time and reminder to sort of set yourself up for success. Obviously, it's difficult when you get triggered, but even when you get triggered, I'll say this, because certainly I still get triggered in my life. I can get triggered, I can have the experience of being triggered, not judge myself, and still eventually, in the middle of the triggeredness or five minutes later, oh yeah, this is what's going on. I can find my breath again. I wanted to add one thing about bringing in the element of space. When we get triggered, typically we get tense. And if you can consciously kind of bring in spaciousness into your cells, into your body, even into your cadence of how you're speaking, it softens everything. Um, spaciousness kind of brings us into that wide view Versus like, he said what? You know, you're, you're, you're in this wide view and you're just kind of like in between thoughts. You got a little space just to kind of bring everything down. Your body can relax because you're bringing in space. It's great for pain, great for stress. Yeah. That was one of the things that I feel um, kind of revolutionized my meditation practice when I started working with the element of space. Mm of bringing in space into my mind and body. I was just like, oh my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I thought about one more thing to tell people if, if you're not familiar with mindfulness or meditation practice. When I started, I would conk out. It was unbelievable. I was holding stress that I was not aware of in my body and I would just fall asleep. And I just, if that happens, whether you're experienced or not in this, Boy, your body is giving you a message. Go with the flow. Don't judge it at all. I don't think that was yeah. Yeah, no more message. I've also heard of people when they start meditating, um, their hands feel like they're like expanding into like kitchen mitts. And I had that for years. I and it, it's weird how um, that spaciousness that you create um, comes out in that feeling. I don't exactly know what that is, but I'm curious if anybody else has that. I've heard other people tell me they have that. Um, and it's distorted. Like the rest of my body's n n the same, but my hands are like huge. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Yeah. By the way, I didn't learn that about Jane until now. <laughs> you know, so that's <laughs> interesting. Just, just uh -huh. Listen, we only have a couple minutes left. I just want to say, almost, it's a little emotional. It's just a heartfelt thanks. Uh, Dave and Elisa, the staff, Yeski Bui, for giving us an opportunity to share from our heart a gift to all of you to, to hopefully support you in your lives and, and the ones you are taking care of. So um, it's just, I, I, it's such a blessing to be given this opportunity. So, so thank you, uh, Lisa and Dave, and, and, and all of you with your openness and willing to participate. It's, it's a total joy for us to share this. Yes. Well, we I have to say oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Appreciate it very, very much.
When I first met Dave and Lisa, you know, I was used to the kind of healing world and psychotherapists, and I'd never really been in a business environment. And I was just blown away by your willingness to bring this into everyday life in your business. And, you know, I'm sure it probably has a lot to do with your great success and why your staff is so happy and wonderful. I mean, it, I just can't say how different a vibe it is than I expected. And then I see in a lot of other businesses and what I hear from people. Thank you. Maybe that's a beautiful way, a beautiful way to end. Uh, Dave and Lisa, I'm not sure yeah. the things. Go ahead. We, we couldn't do it without you two. Oh, love you, love you all. Love to everyone. Thank you. Bless you on your path today and, and going forward. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Bye bye. Bye bye. Is it okay?